Okay guys, so uh, the next stage, there's, there's, there's a couple of ways to do it. Um, you could follow the tutorial in the magazine itself and coat the uh, model in a textured paint which will help the um, plaster that we're going to put around it grip. What I tend to do is um, just score uh, the flat areas so we, we do get a nice grip. But before I do that, what I want to show you is uh, just some of the areas where I've just added some detail. So here, here, uh, you see the brick detail here. And these are going to act as exposed areas, excuse me, in the plaster work uh, when we put the plaster on just to leave bare bricks showing through. Okay guys, so the next stage of the video is basically prior to coating um, the building itself. Um, you can do that, you can put the roof on first, then do this. I tend to do it prior to putting the roof on. I get the, the, the walls almost finished and then start adding um, roof tiles, etc. So we're going to do it that this way in the video. In the tutorial in the magazine itself, uh, Rick coats the, the whole building in a, a masonry paint. Um, doesn't actually explain or say why that is. My initial guess was to add um, a texture to the outer surface of the building for um, the, the, the plaster to, to grab. Um, so you can follow it that way. What I tend to do, I'm going to stick to the way that, that I normally do things because obviously in future videos if you see me doing some of the things um, and it's different to how I've shown this video you're going to ask why and th there is no reason it's whatever suits you whatever habits you have um, for doing this stage and mine basically is I uh, get my uh, scalpel knife and I basically score the PVC and what that uh, sorry it's not PVC it's foam isn't it um, what that does it adds a rougher texture to um, the building and I'm going to put the coating on it's got something that it can grip to rather than being a, surf, a smooth surface. The foam itself has got quite a rough texture and air holes in it as well so you do it does adhere quite well um, and I just do it for extra peace of mind more than anything. Um, one of the things that I want to show you just before we do go on to coating is just a few details that I've added as Rick has done and it, it is a really nice touch. I use it in a lot of different buildings and, and um, walls etc that, that I do when I'm making models. Um, I picked it up a long time ago and it's very easy and it is a nice effect for sort of ruined building, buildings and damaged buildings. And what it is, is just sort of carving in some exposed brickwork. You see? Um, I do a little bit all over. Around window frames is quite nice because that's where you'd, you'd get the cracks because it's, uh, you get vibrations of shutters and windows shutting and doorways and stuff. Uh, so as you can see we've got some up there. Um, and I'll probably add some in and around the bottom of the door here. Maybe on here also. Um, and when you put your coating on, um, you leave those areas showing as they are so you can see the brick through. Another thing that I'll do, and I'll do prior to put the coating on, is just get yourself some uh, watered down PVA uh, and just coat over the areas where you've put the detail. And what that does, any little air holes or anything in there, uh, it fills that up. And when you come to painting, you're not going to get sort of you're not going to see the air holes and it just gets a nicer finish on it so I'm going to pop some PVA on there um, and when we're going to wait for that to dry which for me will probably take a couple of hours uh, for yourself we're going to come back in a minute and want to get onto coating the outside of the building so we'll see you in a second okay here we are guys um, I'm now going to mix some of the plaster and what I have is um, some lightweight uh, casting plaster. Now you can use whatever whatever uh, brand or type of plaster you either have to hand or you prefer to use. This particular plast plaster I use because it, it sets very quickly uh, which suits me for working time etc. Um, again follow the instructions on your um, packaging as to how to mix but bear in mind that we're going to be spreading this with a brush so we may want it to be actually a little bit more fluid than normal but the best thing to do is follow the instructions see how it is if you're able to spread it crack on if it's a little bit thick just add a little bit more water um, now the way that i tend to do it with 
the plaster that I've always used, not just uh, this brand. I think this is, I think this is actually Michael Wooden Scenics. Um, you add the water first and you pour in uh, the plaster itself, the powder, um, to the water and mix, and away you go. Mix your mixing bowl. Um, you can use whatever you want, any kind of bowl or dish from the kitchen. Or what you can do is you can get one of these uh, rubber bowls or silicone bowls which are a lot easier to use because when you've got it mixed, say for instance if you were pouring it rather than painting it on, you know you can hold it like so and pour which is nice and when it comes to cleaning, because you should try and keep all your, your bits and bobs nice and clean, you just let what's left in the pot dry and then you just scrunch it around, all the plaster cracks off, you empty it out and you give it a brush out, swill out with a bit of water and away you go. Uh, and yeah, that's that. So we'll move on to um, actually mixing uh, the plaster. Just bear with me a second. There we go. Um, and like I say, what I'll do first is I'll add the water. Uh, I'm only going to use about half of what, what's in this cup. I, I use measuring cups all the time. They're dead cheap on eBay. Um, and I, I have cupboards and cupboards of them. Uh, it's just always handy to have them around for the different bits and bobs. So I'm going to use about half of this water. Uh, just to show you uh, on this tutorial what we're going to do and with this stuff uh, it's normally two water to one uh, powder normally with this stuff it's uh, one water to two powder so I'll put most of this in but then if it's too thick once I'm mixing up what I'll do is I'll add some more water but I've got to be quite quick with it because like I say this is the rapid set stuff so you can get yourself something to mix with, I'll just use a piece of dowel and you just start mixing and pouring, mixing and pouring constantly mixing D try and not be tempted to, to dump a lot in and try and mix it because that's how you end up getting lumps um, it's just harder to mix and plaster is a lot more difficult to think than you think to mix actually because the plaster will eventually start settling on the top as you can see here uh, you knock it all in and mix Keep mixing. Very boring for you to watch, so what I'll do is I'll speed this bit up. So once you give it a mix, when you're almost there, stop mixing it for a minute, let it rest, let a few of the air bubbles get out because it's full of air bubbles, literally just a few seconds, uh, you know, you can tap the bowl, tap your bench, whatever it is, it'll make air bubbles rise. So I'll let it settle and then give it another good 30 seconds of a mix. Because all them different little uh, fragments and particles of the dust I've got to soak up the water and you, you know you get a lot of bits and bobs trapped but we're looking good there now so what I'm now gonna do excuse me is just pop that to one side keep it off my work surface I've got two brushes I've got a big brush which I'm going to use for the larger areas a smaller brush to go around the detail and all we're going to do um, is get our piece I want to get some plaster on our brush Again, try and keep it moving because it will start. This stuff does start to set, and we're basically just going to paint it on as if it was paint. Yeah, and what what will happen is as you're painting this on, I don't know whether it's going to start setting quick enough for me to show you on here. As you start painting it on, it'll, it will be starting to set because the thinner it is, the quicker it sets. So again, we're just going around the detail that we've done earlier it'll start to set and what you can do is you can get like stroke lines in the plaster like you would do in real life so I'm going to go around the whole building um, by the time I've got around the whole building so we'll come back uh, in a moment what you'll find is you'll, you'll I'll be able to explain in further detail the bits when I say it's starting to dry and you can use your brush to create some nice lines to break up a flat surface so it looks like it's been plastered uh, by hand so I'm just going to get a, a liberal coating on all over the building and we'll come back in a minute so here we are guys you know you're sort of getting you're looking for a rough 
sort of plastered texture like that, you know, you can do things with, with your brush. Once the plaster starts setting, you know, you can add a bit more texture, you can start to stipple if you, you don't like the, um, the brush lines. Don't worry too much about going over detail because you can get rid of that, no problem. Just scrape it off with your finger or if it goes into one of your um, cut lines, you just scrape it out like so. Yeah, we can just get it out onto your tool like that, it's fine. Um, don't worry about it. It's bound to get everywhere. It's very messy. I do recommend putting newspaper down if you don't have a workbench. Um, highly recommend it, in fact. So I'm just going to go around now cleaning up where it's got everywhere just as it's starting to set. Um, it's a lot easier to use when it's just on the verge of setting. Well, I say use to uh, clean up rather than it being wet. Just using my hand to clean it off. If you don't clean it off, you run the risk of, because it, depending what again what brand you use, um, of you letting it dry and then trying to clean it off um, and it tearing the foam that you're leaving exposed. So we're just going to re-establish the lines like so. And that's it really. What I'll probably do with that now um, is go over that again with probably one coat, two if, if needed, um, but you need to let that dry fully. This for me will be drying about 10 minutes. Um, you see like drops like that that have dropped off there drying already. Um, clean out your brushes, clean all your utensils uh, and then go again if you want another coat. If you're happy with how it is that's fine uh, and I'll see you in the next stage. Hi guys and on to the next stage we go. Um, as you can see now I've got the coating um, on the building itself and what I've started to do is start to put some colour on the um, inside block work, the woodwork uh, and the sort of uh, bare brick here on the corners. Um, all I've used for this, I'll show you the colours that I've used. I base coated in Citadel XV88 I then put a uh, null oil wash on, dry brushed again with the XV88. Um, I then did a lighter dry brush of Ballo Brown and then just a very light dusting dry brush of Zandri Dust. Um, and that's brought a nice uh, finish to it. What I tend to do on things like this as well is I will have a look at the contrast when the rest of the colour is on the building and if I feel that it needs to be a little lighter um, I'll probably go at it with, with a, a lighter, maybe a, a shabti bone or something like that. Um, or maybe even sometimes just a very, very fine dry brush of white sometimes just picks things out. But we'll see where we're looking at the end. I think the colour that, that, that I've got at the moment is fine. Um, the woodwork was base coated in uh, model air colour burnt umber and then I dry brushed some dried bark from Citadel and then uh, dry brushed again with Zandri dust. And again, what I'm gonna do is once the detailing's on the door itself, um, I'll have a look, see if I need to bring that up or darken it down a little. But it's looking uh, quite good as it is at the moment, so I think we may be okay. Um, the balcony platform, I base coated in the raw umber uh, and I've put a black wash on it. Um, this is basically just um, sort of a how can you say, a pre-base because it's not going to be wood effect. If you have a look at what Rick has done in his tutorial, um, they're actually colours because on the uh, Dale buildings he's sort of achieved a nice effect of them all being like a a very sort of light ochre stroke sandy colour, the buildings themselves, but he's got like pinches of colour in there like the reds and the greens um, on the woodwork etc. So this will be painted um, eventually in your reds and greens uh, and dry brushed up a little bit lighter so it looks like a worn wood but this is just a base coat uh, that I put on um, because balsa wood will soak up your paint no end so I've put that the colour on there and just washed it to make it darken it down a little just so that when I come to paint on it the paint's just not drying out too quick and you know being sucked into the wood itself so we can put that to one side for the moment we'll come back to that at a later stage and we'll go back to the building now like I said you can go over 
with the uh, plaster finish as many times as you like. Uh, this has three coats on it um, and I think that's going to be suffice. Um, these parts here where you can see the blue foam through, that's just where the platform connects so they're not going to be visible uh, on the end result. Um, so what I've done, I've just made a start on one side uh, just to give you an idea of uh, the kind of finish that I'm going for. It's Again, it's slightly different to uh, the tutorial in the book um, but for me it's more true to what I envisage uh, the finish on these kind of buildings would be. Um, you can follow the um, tutorial in the book if you so wish. If you want to crack on and follow it the way I'm doing it, I'll explain how I do that. And all I use uh, to get this finished, we can get them out of the way for now, is um, I use Woodland Scenics uh, pigments. Uh, so I've got uh, Earth Undercoat, Raw Umber, and Yellow Ochre. And then I use some inks, uh, any manufacturer will do, but I use the FW inks. And I've got black, and this is burnt umber, uh, it's like a dark brown. And all I do, basically, is I start off with the yellow ochre, which is sort of the flat colour that I want. Um, I put this into a, a mixing dish, or a Petri dish. What I tend to save is my Pringles lids, works perfectly for this. Uh, so I'll pour some in. I mix 50-50 um, pigment and water um, just because it gets the right consistency for the technique that we're going to do. Now if you don't have these in your collection or you don't have them to hand, don't worry, you don't have to go out and buy them. I mean they are quite expensive but they do last a long time so you know if you, if you do have the means to get hold of some of these I do recommend it, if, especially if you're going to do more of these buildings uh, or other terrain projects they do come in really really handy. Uh, but don't worry if you haven't you can easily use your normal paints and the only issue with using your normal paints is because they come in such a small uh, tub you are going to go through quite a few so one of the other options that you can do if you take one of these uh, so let's just say for instance this Ballo Brown yeah and you've got like a B&Q or a home base or any other DIY store that will uh, mix colours for you in paint emulsion paint that you use at home to paint your walls in and they do colour match, just take this in and get them to colour match it and get yourself a small, it's about, I think they're about 200-250ml mixer pot of this colour um, and you do exactly the same thing as I've said with these you'll mix them down with water to make them quite thin but what you'll have to bear in mind is because these are pure pigment um, you will need more paint to water ratio to get the consistency that you need for this effect, um, so just bear that in mind. But yeah, you can. You don't have to buy these. You can. You know, the, that was six pound fifty for that bottle. For something probably twice that size from B and Q would probably cost you two or three pound, I reckon. So you know, if you're looking at not spending too much, by all means do that. I just use these because I just I like to use them and I've got them, so I may as well. Um, so the technique itself. Once you get your uh, your colour mixed with the water and you get it to a quite a fine consistency, not too fine. You, do, I think try to describe the consistency of things on a video is always very very hard and when I watch videos myself like painting tutorials and things like that and, you know they'll say things like the consistency of milk. Well milk has different consistencies um, you know you get full fat milk, you get semi skim milk, you get uh, skimmed milk, you get milk no fat milk, you know, there's different consistencies, so it's it's hard and it's what people interpret. So it's kind of trial and error and play it by ear and see how you go. What I would suggest is that you start off with a small amount of water and try it and, and add more and try it and add more and try it until you get happy with what, you, what, what you've got. And we're going to apply them using a, a sea sponge. Uh, you could use an old bath, bath, normal bathroom sponge, you could tear it up and use that if you want. This just is, is a lot uh, more dense and you get a nicer uh, stipple, I find, with it. And all you do is you're going to do, do your mix-up of your yellow ochre or your Bala Brown and you're going to let the sponge soak it up. Wet your sponge first in just pure water before you go into the paint. I always recommend that. It just, it, it, you get a nicer, um, sort of, it applies nicer, let's put it that way. So wet your sponge, go into your mix and then just start dabbing it on. Now your first, your base coat, 
you're going for the yellowy colour. You know, you can be quite heavy handed, you can press it on and squeeze some of the paint out and then you can move it around with the sponge and things like that. Don't worry about it. Just get a nice coverage so you're covering all the white so there's no white left. Um, and then what you're going to do is you're going to add in a little bit of the raw umber. Um, if, again, if you don't want to buy these and you want something, just get a paint that's probably somewhere, I would say that's probably a dried bark. Take that, get a colour match, uh, get a small uh, sample pot. Mix a little bit of that into your original mix. So make sure that when you do your original mix you do enough to keep going. Uh, so it just darkens it up a little bit. Uh, don't worry about mixing it up and getting it thing. Use your sponge and just roughly mix and dabble. And what you end up then, yeah, you end up with different colours on your sponge, which when you apply it to the model, looks a lot more natural and looks cool. Uh, and then you're going to go over again, but you're not going to go over every area that you've done, and you're going to be applying it a little bit softer than you did with the uh, yellow ochre. Once you've done that. You're going to get, and depend, this is, all depends on how dark you want to go. You could go another layer and put your earth undercoat on, which is a little bit darker than the, the, the raw umber, and just, just makes it a little bit warmer at the same time. Or you can go straight to your inks. If it's not dark enough for you, can you see these dark patches? Yeah? I've done that by adding black. The browner patches, which you see here, here, and in this corner, are through add in the brown ink and all you want is one or two drops now when you add the ink you do need to mix this in uh, because you'll get too rich of a colour if you just mix it in uh, lightly like you did with the um, raw umber so you, you give it a good mix and then you, you go in and with this the darker the colour the lighter and sort of um, more how can I say scarce you are so a little bit first take a step back, have a look at it, see what you think, if there's not enough on it, go again. Um, and just get it to how you think it looks natural. Um, what you'll also get is, let it dry. Now the plaster will suck up the paint fairly quick and it will dry fairly quick. Um, if you keep applying a wet paint to this plaster, it will turn the plaster back into liquid and you'll start getting white spots. Don't panic if that happens, just let it dry, reapply your yellow ochre, let it dry and then reapply your darker colours. Um, sometimes, sometimes, you can see bits on the bottom half here, I think it looks quite natural and looks quite cool. But what you don't want is pure white where you dab your sponge on and the coloured plaster that you've just spent 10 minutes colouring comes off and you've got a big white patch. Little speckles like this I think look quite cool and quite natural. So that's how we do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go through it with you on the video. I've done one side just to show you what the finished uh, look is I'm going for. And we'll do this side. Um, I wanted to show you this side first because, like I say, there's, there's drying times etc. And it was just easier to show you that before I go on to here. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to get some masking tape and I'm going to mask in off this window and the shutters so we don't get any paint on it and then uh, I'll go through the mixing and the applying and uh, hopefully you guys will give it a go so we'll uh, come back in a second okay guys so uh, first layer you're gonna get your sponge you're gonna get it wet you're gonna wring it out like so We're going to get our damp sponge straight into our pigment stroke paint new water mix and straight on. Yeah, can you see that? And we're looking for a stippled effect but a nice even coverage. And what we want to do is not have any of the white showing or very minimal you know, at least. And remember not to go over your exposed brickwork that you've uh, worked so hard to try and get looking uber cool, which I've done before. And we're going to go around the window that we've taped off. Don't worry about going over the um, decorative border because we will be painting that. 
Yeah, so you basically you can see the effect that we're going for here. Um, what I tend to do is go around the whole lot, stand back, have a look at it, see if I've missed anywhere, um, and then just go and fill in all the gaps. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to finish getting this coat on, I'm going to let it dry, and then uh, we'll come back and I'll show you where we go from there. Okay, so uh, I've got my first coat on. Uh, I've dried it out with a little help from my uh, trusty hair dryer. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go in the original mix with some of the raw umber. And you want a fair amount of this because it's slightly different than mixing paint in the sense that um, the pigment for your, your, your base colour, the lighter colour, um, there's a lot more pigment in it than there is in paint. so it will try and hold its original colour a lot more. So like I say, what we're going to do is we're going to mix it using the sponge. Yeah, and can you see how you're just sort of getting that already swirled effect. And we're going to go straight on a little bit less. And it, this is a good time to, if you start to notice any little white bits showing through, just get them with the darker colour. Yeah, and you're not going for an overall coverage again, like we said. Uh, we're just going for sporadic, uh, and it's not the leopard spot uh, technique either, it's just slightly different, it's, we're going for like a speckle. Um, I mean the, the leopard spot technique probably would work quite well with something like this. Uh, but can you see what I'm getting there? I like to put quite a bit at the bottom. There we go. So that's the second colour on. Uh, what I'm now going to do is I'm going to darken up again. I'm going to wait for this to dry. Uh, I'm going to put a little touch of ink in and uh, add onto that. So we'll come back in a second. Okay, guys. So uh, the two coatings are nice and dryish. We're now going to get the ink. Give it a good mix. Squeeze the pipette. Suck some up. Open it. Be careful with this stuff. Uh, Little is more. So put a drop on, give it a mix, have a look at the colour, see what you think. If you need more, add more. Yeah, that's like a more rich, warmer colour. So now what I'm going to do is exactly the same way, but I'm going to concentrate on sort of underneath the decorative border, underneath the window, squeeze it in, and then just the odd little dot. Yeah. What you could do is use the other end, which has got nothing on it, and you can sort of blend it. Yeah, I'm liking how that's turning out. Now, I'm kind of liking the dirty effects which you had on the other side, so for this, it's a drop of the black, good mix. Again, this is very quick for camera. Um, what I'll probably will do is touch uh, the details up off camera, you know, on the other sides, etc. I'm just trying to get the. I don't want to spend loads of time if you're just watching me dabbing onto a onto a blank surface. So I'm just showing you how it's achieved, and you sort of chop and change it to suit. So a little drop of black, and I'm going to mix that up. And as you can see. The black has a massive effect, it's very dark. So with this, it can be very sparing, so it's just the odd little bit where you think, you know, along the bottom you might get a lot of dirt splashing up and such. You know, just here and there, and that should be enough. And I'm going to leave that there for now. Yeah, I uh, have plenty of tissue to hand, this can be quite messy. Another thing that I would recommend, uh, I haven't done it on this because, you know, I always forget, wear rubber gloves um, and you'll keep your hands nice and clean. So that's where we're at at the moment. Um, it's looking quite nice, I'm fairly happy with that. Yeah? Again, there are other techniques that you can do. Um, it depends how far you want to go with it. This is, you know, if it's just to get quick buildings out uh, that look kind of realistic on the table from three foot away, this is perfect.
yeah. So I'm going to finish off off camera the other two sides, and um, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll we'll get crack in and we'll move on to the next stage. So here we go, guys. Um, this has roughly took me from the last part of the video. Uh, about 10 minutes to get it to this stage and then let it dry. Whilst it was drying, um, I put some colours onto the uh, balcony and what I used was corn red uh, on some of the uprights and I think it was, let me have a look, I'll tell you exactly what it was. It was Loren Forest um, on the greens for the panels and then left the rest of it in the, the wood I then uh, highlighted in um, Talan sand, uh, just a dry brush, just to age it a little bit. Um, I think it's a nice finish. So what the next stage now is from here. Um, oh, sorry, yeah, I um, done the border, the decorative border in the same uh, corn red to match on here, and then I washed that in null oil. Once that null oil is dry, I will dry brush it the same as I have on the timber just to make it look aged again. Um, and I'll probably then, oh no, I need to do the detailing on the door and then I'll attach that in place permanently. So pretty much from here now, um, I do have another window to go here, but I'm just waiting uh, on some uh, decorative window frames to arrive, which I've ordered um, just, just to make it a little bit better but I knew I was able to carry on with the tutorial without those which is what I've done so if that side looks very blank that's the reason why I'll stick them on at a later date um, but yeah I just wanted to hold the tutorial up so we could crack on the next stage from here now obviously after dry brushing the decorative border um, is going to be um, the roof the shingles the tiles and it's a fairly easy um, stage to do using what I've already mentioned in the uh, in the first video but we're going to go through that separately um, in part three so look out for part three make sure you uh, comment on the videos let me know if you are building along and definitely definitely show me some of your whip pics tag me in them on Facebook um, or if you're able to attach them some way um, then do so. I'd be really interested to see what you guys are coming up with. And so, yeah, basically in the next video, we're going to be putting the roof